Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're in the fish room doing some work um, and now that I've got one of my hands back I can start to address some of my dirty little problems. Okay, let's go with that. Um, it's these tanks here, they're breeding tanks which have like internal sump, under gravel, filtery things built into them and they've been great. Uh, I think I paid a grand total of five pounds for them but they're just not working for me anymore. I don't want them, I have, I have a plan. Uh, of what I want to do with this shelf and I don't want small breeding tanks um, more on that later but yeah I don't want these but what I've actually looked at is replacing them with either one big tank so this is a six foot span on this shelf uh, either one big six foot tank or two three foot tanks um, but just because of the awkward sizing I don't want to change too much but to give myself enough room I kind of want something that's two foot wide three foot long and kind of 40 centimetres, I know I'm mixing all my measurements now, but I, I want 80 to 90 centimetres, 50 to 60 centimetres and about 40, 45 centimetres that way. Um, but I, th I can't find any tanks that size, second hand obviously, and they are just fish room tanks so I don't want to spend a fortune on it. Um, getting glass cut even to size is like 60 quid a panel this is ridiculous. So I had a thought. These tanks, they're, act they're actually separated by a divider in here. So this is the right size. Um, it's just that it's got this big stupid divider in the middle of it and these little sump bits at the back. So what's to stop me taking out this central divider, taking out the sump pieces and having a, a perfect a size tank that I want? Um, so, we're going to give it a bash and see how we get on. Um, I've drained all the water down, I've emptied this one as much as I can. Um, I want to get it outside and get it cleaned up a little bit and then start attacking it with a razor blade and see how much I can loosen this off and sort it out. So let's try that. First things first, um, I need to clean them up. They're manky. Very, very dirty. Uh, I'm going to use three things for this whole procedure. Water. A scrub daddy and a razor blade. So this is both going to be used for getting the tough marks and ground in plants and dried in things uh, off but also to split the silicon, that's the idea. But we'll start with the cleaning. I've used this thing loads to clean tanks and I'm always amazed at how really good a job it does. Um, not much effort at all. So that's it. Cleaned up as much as I'm going to do for now so I can tack the glass. Um, but I might be able to see them a little bit better now. So each tank you can see is one pane of glass across here. So no join there. It's just this bit as a divider. And then in each tank they have a little glass bit to separate this and then again there so you'd put an airstone down there fill this full of rubble media sponge whatever and the airstone would drag water through there which should drag your water through your filter media and filter it and it was quite effective it's fine but I don't really want to use that um because if, if I can get rid of this that can maximize the amount of space that I've got on that rank and I can use different tanks for breeding which is fine and what kind of what I want. So my thinking is here, so this is basically three foot by two foot. Um, I think I'm going to need some kind of brace. So if I take this out, I'm going to try and maybe use these pieces here. So there's one, two there. Maybe put one along there, one along here. and use another piece to brace it. Maybe cut a bit of this. I don't know, I'm gonna to have to see what works. I might get away with just using one across there and one off there, just off center, because it kind of stops here. But that should be good enough. It's six mil glass, so I think it's going to need bracing. But other than that, it's rock solid. Which is worrying me slightly about how I'm going to get all the silicon off. So I'm going to start with these bits, the easy bits, see if I can get them off with the razor blade. Which I've already cut a bit of my finger off with, but great. Um, and it's just a case of getting in there and 
loosening it up and pulling it away and then just kind of reverse jigsawing it. So we'll see how we get on. The majority of them came away fine. Um, got them all over here, no breakages. Basically cut all the silicon, give it a bit of a wiggle, get the knife underneath, all good. I switched from a actual razor blade to a Stanley knife because um, I kept snapping razor blades. <laughs> um, but yeah, that kind of took 10 minutes. The middle pain, however, is being a little more stubborn. Um, it is, if anything, too perfect a size. Um, there's literally no gap between this pane and the front pane. So for instance here I've gone round several times with the knife, cutting away bits. But here I've had to, so I've put a clamp on in reverse so it's pushing the back and the front apart slightly. And that's where this has started to come away. And there's little if no silicon in there. So I'm just trying to break the seal ever so slightly but I think this is the point of the video where I say don't try this at home because yeah I'm, I'm worried I'm going to s smash it but yeah if you look at that white stuff there see if I can get one more squeeze in see how it grows slightly so I need to figure out a way to do that break the seal all the way down hopefully that'll give me a bit more wiggle room let's see how we got on with that I've been scraping away hammering away for the best part of an hour and getting nowhere it's not it's not for budging. It's not for budging. Um, not even getting the slightest bit of movement. I can't get anything in between it. I've tried moving the panels around. Are you thinking smash it? I'm thinking smash it. Should be able to smash the middle bit. That will make it easier to get out. There must be another way. Smash it. I was about to show you my very clever way using um, clamps, but I didn't have to smash it. And then I smashed it. So I've been at this for a couple of hours now. I'm well past the point of, oh, I wish I'd never started and just bought one. But yeah, I was I've managed to get this seam completely off by doing clamps back to front and I could slide a razor blade down there. But then as soon as I let off any pressure here, there was nothing to move that one back. So I got as far in as I could, and then I was trying to use clamps to just push the whole thing back. Moved, obviously I had too much pressure on this top clamp, moved it all, and we've cracked it there. No big deal really, because I don't need this bit of glass. I was just trying to be a little bit more professional, because this is clearly what all the professionals do. But anyway, at least we can move on and get it out. All right, that's it, done. As much as I'm gonna do today, leak test next what I want to make sure is by taking out some of the bits of silicon here so here you can see there's like a little bit of a gap in silicon but that's the inside rather than the join I just want to double check same on this one that it's retained its structural rigidity so I'm gonna fill it up leave it overnight see how that gets on see if we can think of a way to clean up so all these marks here these are watermarks that were on it before I even got it, so they're like, must be five, six, seven years old, if not older. So, see what we've got that can take care of that, see if we can't fancy it up a little bit. I'm not sure whether or not I do need to do anything in terms of bracing it. I'm not worried about it immediately self-destructing with a leak test, but over time it might be something to look at. Um, but yeah, the amount of force I was putting on there, it didn't look like it was giving anything away. So I'm kind of, although I say this one's six mil, all the other ones are a lot thicker. So the back's a lot thicker and there's a lot of silicon in this. I eh, don't know. I might risk it just so you can all tell me how wrong I am. But anyway, leak test. Right, here we are a day later, a day and a bit later. Um, it's holding water, so yeah. 
box number one ticked, but I've spent the best part of an hour trying to clean it. <laughs> and I just cannot get these, what I'm assuming are like hard water calcium stains off. They've been on there for probably years, as long as I've had the tanks and God knows how old they are before that. Uh, and they ain't coming off. I've tried everything. I've tried glass cleaner, vinegar, scraping within an inch of its life, barkeeper's friend. So if you know of anything that I could try that might work, let me know. But what I'm using these tanks for, um, it's kind of fine. I've put up with it so far. I could put up with it a bit more. Um, I'm just thinking now whether or not I want to brace it. Uh, and I'm thinking, because I'm lazy, that I won't. I don't see any deflection. Um, so, I'm going to assume it's all fine. And say that that's one tank done. So I'm going to rinse it out a few times, clean it up as best I can, see if I can get it looking halfway decent and get it back in the fish room. All right, common sense got the better of my laziness. So, I'm going to put in the... Braces, that's what we're calling them. Um, so I want to make sure I've got some lips here on this side. Uh, so I'm just going to get a spirit level to mark out where they need to go on the other side, which is just below these holes. And I'm just going to put one centrally and then maybe one to either side here because I've got that many bits of glasses that bits of glasses, bits of glass that happen to be that size, so I might as well use them all. Otherwise they're just going in the bin. So I'm just going to mark out here where I think they should go and double check that with the label and then it's going to be a case of attach that to the wall to the back wall and then attach these ones which are all made up with the bits that I took out which is good that I didn't break them all that there that there braced right Day three working on this, uh, and that's as much as it's going to do. So I have added the braces, central braces here. It is but a matter of days before I accidentally lean on them and break them, but you know, they're there. Um, fairly secure. They've only been, um, what, a day and a half for the silicon to cure, so a few more days before it's properly um, rigid, but that's fine. I've also added, had these little um, pre drilled holes, so I've added a float valve. In there so I can hook this up to the water so as whenever I'm doing water changes out of this I just need to take the water out and it'll automatically refill to hopefully the right level but we'll test that and then the final thing is I've cut myself a little polycarbonate lid which fitted earlier and um, so I just need to draw a wee hole or drill a wee hole even for feeding and just to use the handle to hook it back out again. And then that's it done. So it's not the prettiest, but it's probably saved me a couple of hundred quid. Um, or a very specific niche Facebook marketplace hunt. Um, so we've got a tank, three foot, two foot, foot and a half, or whatever it was, for my next project. And it should work very well for my next project. So what I'm planning on doing is going all in and getting a bunch of discus and starting a breeding program from very small discus, growing them on, see if we can get some pears going out of them and see if we can't start a little discus factory. Um, see how we got on with that. So obviously I have my discus tank here, which is great and all, but that can accommodate a hell of a lot more discus. So we'll have that available. And then I want to use this whole shelf. There's two, there's another one of those tanks, which I'm going to buy two groups of small discus and grow them on and see if we can't get a pair out of the the groups and then those tanks over there i'm going to repurpose as breeding tanks in future so when i do get some discus paired off in these i can move the pairs into there to make them breeding cubes and then bring them back in here to grow on and then the ones that are just want to live their life will do the quarantining procedure to make sure that they can live with these guys and then this can be a properly stocked discus tank. That's the plan anyway, but oh, it took me three days to do that tank. And then I've got to do this one as well. And then ultimately one day 
when these fish have all moved on and gone to the better place. Maybe we'll have the biggest discus tank in the UK. Who knows? Right, if you like that kind of thing and you fancy following along in that journey, tune in, hit that subscribe button. Come and join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time. We usually have a live stream, talk about all kinds of things, have fun quizzes and games and everything. But yeah, click the subscribe button. There's a join button down there as well so you can get some behind the scenes sneak peeks and things like that. But yeah, we're going to go and become a discus breeder. Bye!